Hello, it's Joe Lyons from The Automator, and it's another episode of What We Automated This Week. Another really crazy busy week with uh, client consultations and done-for-you stuff, so not sure how many. Let's see here. So, use prompt assistant. You know what? First, let me bump up my DPI. Of course, I got a hotkey. It just jumps to it instead of going to navigate to it, which would drive me batty. So, here we go. And that's, I jump, jump up the DPI just for the recording. It's easier. I don't have to zoom in so much. Um, recently modified scripts, and it's going through a couple locations, um, mostly our S drive, which we just released a video the other day about how to create those fake drives that are really handy, and um, we, we do have like the G drive also, which is our guest drive, where some people, um, certain folders there are for clients where they also have access directly to their files, um, the other ones we do work for them, but... Um, they don't use Dropbox, and it's not an ongoing thing where they're changing their files. So, it's Prospect Finder. Uh, as I mentioned before last week, um, for Jeff, we're doing a lot of stuff between LinkedIn and um, HubSpot and other tools, connecting them using API calls, sometimes imitating a browser. But um, very cool stuff we're doing for him as he works in the afternoons with him. Um, developing this really it's a crazy long powerful tool um for um our our client they they had a spreadsheet for biofeedback where they had a spreadsheet of information and they wanted to bound to to basically do a lookup hey in our report we have this go pull this you know if you find this term go pull more information and append it because that's not existing in their current program. And also in their current program, they don't have a way to actually export the data. So we're automating that. We, we drop it right now, we create an HTML file, and then we use um, a script to print, quote unquote, print the HTML file to a PDF, just so it's, it's making it easy if people wanna print it out. Um, of course, they could have the HTML version as well, uh, but PDFs are a little more locked down, so we can control a bit more of how it's going to look. Um, email merge. So, I was helping with a, a webinar, and uh, and I did a we did a webinar ourselves on using email uh, mail merge stuff with. So we're combining Outlook and Excel. So it's pretty cool. You go into Excel, you can highlight the rows you want. That row, we've told it, hey, look for the header that says the first name and the last name and the email address and then do a mail merge. And this one, we actually, we changed it now. Before we had the HTML in the file, now we're reading a separate file, so it's a little easier to swap out between different creatives, uh, meaning the, the, the email you're sending. And we moved the subject line to the top, so it's easier to, to make sure you change that. But I, well, years and years ago, when we were running the auto hockey webinars, um, that's how I did all that. And it was really easy. I mean, we have a, another tool that uses Mailgun or API tool for doing the newsletter. <clears throat> But this is still, it's just dynamic. And what's cool is you can have it display in Outlook. And I was showing um, Stephanie, our client, look, you can you can select people, hit a button. If you want it to display in Outlook, it can show in front of you. You can actually add text add text to your email to them. So it's really personalized, right? And they really feel like it's they're writing, communicating with them, which really helps with people opening and reading your emails. So it's a great little blend of... Um, email merge, but making it easy to update it and stuff. So um, we were doing stuff with that. And I also, I used to, I should go look to see, because I think they want us to do more webinars. I used to have a way to automate the downloading of Zoom registrants using uh, API calls, but they changed their authentication. Maybe Irfan can look at it and see if we can get that authentication back, because it's, it's annoying to have to go log in and download who's registered. It, it's actually quite cumbersome to go do that. Um, so it'd be nice if we had a tool for that. Uh, Kevin, he's a, a lawyer, and um, he, he's an econometrics lawyer. He actually testifies in court um, on cases, and he uses the Locus API, uh, which, which allows for having his data structured in a way, and he can automate the attachments of files and messages to especially everybody at a given team. So we've done a lot of stuff with his uh, tool to, to make it easier for him to communicate with his clients. And we were, we're doing other stuff as well. We, we got um, some PDF files that had court cases. And so from basically his competitors, uh, other lawyers that are like him. And so we imported them and then we can see the companies that they you know hired him 
his competitor. And so we can reach out to them and say, hey, we offer serverless services. So that's another thing we're doing for him. Um, so Michael, Michael was, I think he was the first radiologist we ever talked to. And that was um, like two or three years ago now. And he, it was funny. We hadn't talked to him in a while. And it was a really great quote. I think I wrote part of it down. I need to go back um, to the end of the video too, because he had another great one. But <clears throat> he basically said he was so impressed because we wrote this script for him like two years ago and it hasn't needed to have any changes it's been solid it works great the thing was he added a new monitor and because um of the way he's doing what he's doing he's a radiologist and he moves his mouse over the thing and it interacts with the controls and it has something to do with, with the location on the monitor and so he anticipated it breaking and it did <clears throat> so he reached out and thankfully um took us a couple hours to update but this is the other really cool thing was we were um we updated it and he's like okay so if if i have to if i have this change happen again how can i update it so we, so as ace was showing him well you'd use the you know automator spy or the auto hockey spy to go over here and get these controls and find it here and i'm like as ace why don't you just build a little tool to do this for him so um in another i think it added about 30 minutes to it i thought it'd be faster but he well what we realized was we made it a tool to move your mouse over, hit a button, and it gets you the classes that you need. But then I said, well, wait a minute. Why don't you, if you were, instead of placing it in your code, in your script, why don't you write it to an any file, and then your script can read that any file. So our tool will go move your mouse over the screen, hit a hotkey, it'll get the classes, but it writes it to a specific file, which the other file reads from, right? So we basically made a tool where he can um, not have to understand coding, uh, all he has to do is just remember, oh, and then we added it instead of adding a new hotkey, because that was the other way. He's like, man, I got I got so many hotkeys. How am I going to remember how to run this? And I said, well, don't use a hotkey. Just put it to the system tray icon. So now he goes to the system tray icon, and, and it launches that other script to, like, basically reconfigure, right, recalibrate. Um, so it's a very cool little thing we did for him. He was really stoked. And uh, he, he did say mention something. He's going to be switching the PAX tool that they're using he mentioned, I forget what it was, but it was from Fiji, um, Fiji, um, Fuji. And uh, we hadn't worked with it yet, but we are explaining to him, this is all we do, right? We, we always find ways to automate programs. I mean, we've never failed. Sometimes they're not as glamorous as others, depending on the program we're connecting to, but uh, it's not a big deal to work on programs that we're not familiar with. Uh, during the hero call, this was interesting. Ray, um, he was having problems with some of his hot strings not triggering and he wanted to have an additional thing that would delete the previous fails of having the triggers happen and Isaiah, it was a really good learning moment because ray was saying well in some programs it does this other programs it does that and how do i account for this stuff and we're like man that you know there's eight million programs in the world and trying to write a script that will take into account in every program like that's just it's not easy because every program reacts differently and we don't know how they're going to react if it's going to delete the the dot or the space or not some of them do some of them don't um and then he said well what if we just you know he's like i think 90 percent of the time it's going to be in either i think he said uh brave brave or sight and we said well oh well that changes everything right if we're only trying to account for two programs we go solve those two programs, right? Um, and then, so we, we did this tool for him where it will automatically, you know, when you hit control backspace, it sends, if you're in a certain program, it will send the um, control backspace twice, right? To, well, control and then backspace twice. Uh, but other programs, it only will send it once, right? So um, we, we also realized, hey, kind of a similar approach. If he has a problem where it doesn't work, now he can hit a hotkey and it will get that window, the new program, and add it to our list where you gotta send it twice. So we made it a better tool, more, a little more sophisticated, that makes it easy, it'll auto update, and then going forward with that new window, it won't have that problem. So that's really cool. It was a good hero call where we covered a lot of, um, it was really that one thing, but it was cool to adjust what he was doing. We still don't know exactly why his hot strings don't trigger. Uh, it's it's and it's apparently it's not always that way, so it's really hard to nail down, right? Um, simple password. So this was just demonstrating how to in the hero call. Azaz was demonstrating how you can add a password. Actually, this code I think works, so you can check it out. Um, and then he added the eyeball. Um, let me see if I can double click it here for the run. Yeah. So 
Oh, and now right now it's locked down to numbers, apparently. But notice here, and with a certain number of characters, so somewhere in here, um, if this is it, let's see, if limit five characters, and they have to be numbers, and it's a password, but if this eyeball, that's what he put here. If I click it, now we can see, and if I click it again, so this is a toggle on the password. So <clears throat> this actually came up because I realized when I record a lot of our stuff for API calls, um, I'll, I will share my screen and my tokens are visible and then I have to go change them. And it's just annoying because we'll have them on the screen. And even though I keep them in the any file, so the file themselves doesn't have them, when I'm sharing my GUI, they're right there. And you would think, well, that's for you, Joe. But when I'm recording my screen to share it with you guys, like it becomes a liability and a problem. So we, we came up with this simple approach where, hey, it doesn't have to automatically be shown. So you can store your passwords, have them there, but not visible, but I can toggle it if I want to see them, right? So it's a, a great little example, um, as I did there. If you want to learn more about GUIs, our intro to GUI course uh, is really great. It's um, especially in V2, because here in V2, you can see they're all objects and it's just much easier to work with. And Isaiah, someone, another hero member, I'm trying to remember, um, Rob, I think, was having issues with this uh, auto hotkey string lookup tool, and he, he asked for a couple changes and fixes. Now, I haven't gotten back to him yet, so sorry, Rob, if I haven't written you back, but um, Isaiah, we did see a couple of the bugs. There were a couple minor things that he pointed out, and we fixed those. It also, it's a V1 script. You can see that right here, right? It's a V1 script. And so I, I don't want to keep putting too much more time into that because um, also it's a complicated script. So converting it to V2 is, is going to take some time. But it um, we did add a couple things that he asked for. Uh, namely, one is like when, it, when you launch the script that the edit window is, is actually um, focused. So you don't have to click it to go start typing, which that's a no-brainer. Um, there was another one where the tool tips were showing up at times, but this this tool is a great tool because you can run it and see all of your hot strings and hot keys, and you can filter and you can filter by different file types. Let me see if I can run it here. So I have twenty three apparently twenty out of twenty three. There we go files, um, and it displays my hot keys. Um, I can search, so I can say um, zoom. And this makes it very easy to, let, let's search for um, pause. So it'll filter that list. Huh, sorry, Joey. Jesus. Um, I got a lot of confidential data in here, so um, let's try this again. Let's search for gist, gist. So yeah, this is uh, it's a great, because it searches across running scripts. Now, one of the things Rob asked for was, Hey, if I double click this, I want it to send the text, like, or trigger, you know, if it's a hot string, which I can also um, go here and I can filter to say, oh no, actually, sorry, right here, I can filter on just hot strings um, or hot keys or both. But what he wanted was when, hey, if this is here and it's a hot string, double click it and we'll send that text. But I was telling Isaiah, we purposely made this script to force you to type it, right? Because that will help your memory muscle, your muscle memory learn and remember what the thing is. And I don't want it to actually trigger the thing. It's just to help look it up and find it. So it's a very, very cool script. Again, it's an older script, it's V1, but um, very cool. Launch editor, that just, that just, it's cool. It will open, that's what we use in that tool. You can double click it and it will open that script on that line, which is really cool. Um, our clip share tool is still, I don't think we've shared it yet. Um, we should at some point get back to, because there's not much more to do it where we can make it shareable, but it allows me to copy and as AS paste, we use a Dropbox folder to sync the clipboard um, or an Irfan or Rizwan, we, we all use this tool. So it's really great. Um, or if you were like on a laptop, you know, you can copy on one and paste on the other. Now Windows has built in ways now with Windows 10 and 11 to do that. If you signed in your account on each computer and enable those features, uh, push bullet, if you've ever used that, does the same thing. Um, but our tool, all you have to do is have a, either a network drive or a Dropbox, you know, some sort of a shared drive, and it's uh, it, it works really well. It also is able to send messages to each other, which is interesting. Um, but but yeah, that's a cool tool. Uh, Auto splitter. So Mike, another client of mine, 
he um he had a bunch of videos that he wanted us which i used the effortless video reducer to shrink the files down and it went it was crazy it was getting him down to like four percent five percent of the originals but he had a requirement he wanted each video to be under 200 megs and some of his initial files were 16 gigs and it did get him down to like one or less than one um however even at like 300 megs or 400 megs it's still okay that's two two or three videos so um we were creating a script to split them and now it's easy with ffmpeg to split them at time intervals so i want to every five minutes stop and create another video and parse it out until the video's done but what i clearly wanted was something that did the file size and so um and I don't know if it was from hallucinations or what, but AI kept giving us this other thing that we couldn't, doesn't even exist, right? So I think it was a hallucination. But I told Isaiah, well, why don't we do this? On any given file, maybe we, we mention, hey, make, split it at, um, you know, a minute or 10 minutes or whatever, right? So we're going to create hundreds or possibly thousands of files, but then we use AutoHotKey to loop across those files and start you know, concatenating them in order until we get to a certain file size. And once we get close to it, then we'll create a chunk and then do keep going, right? So um, we have a, a way we plan to be able to say, okay, let's limit it by file size instead of by time. But uh, um, we haven't written that one yet, but it, it does, we understand how we can go about getting it now. The, um, the separateless video reducer, again, we, we put it out there, it's I think $10-ish. Um, crazy great tool, saves, you know, um, actually one of our clients here, another hero member wrote, and I forget he saved, I think it was like 130 gigs or so. It was, it was a big number, um, by using it. Now with this stuff I was mentioning with Mike, I was diving a little deeper and there's another setting that we didn't play with because it was so complicated. But the CRF in FFmpeg has to do with how much compression you use. And we chose, well, I wanted to keep that tool really simple before. And the CRF, it's really weird. It also differs on the, depending on the encoder, um, you have to shift the number some, but I worked through it and I think we have a good approach on how we'll let people choose how compressed they want the video. So we'll be updating that tool at some point to allow you to choose the compression level. So it adds another complexity, but we're not gonna mention CRF. We're just gonna say low, medium, high, um, which, which is so much clearer than this crazy CRF, which is like, 18 to 30 is your range and and again it's really c confusing and not clear so um, we're going to give you just a couple options and allow you to choose how compressed it is um, there is the speed also which affects the file size but it's not the same thing as how compressed the video is so anyway we've been that's a it's a really great tool if you have videos and you want to save some space um, i highly recommend you check that out on um, this podcast a video so We've been doing a lot of stuff with Notebook LLM, or Notebook LM from Google for creating podcasts. And by the way, I just saw the other day, they, they now made a change on that where now you can give instructions in the podcast to, on what, what to focus on and like, kind of like a prompt on what to do, which is great because now it's a little more customized. However, um, what was interesting was, you know, it creates a podcast, which is just an audio file. And I have this tool, podcast to video that takes an audio file and you can pick a thumbnail and overlay it and create an MP4 file so you can upload it to YouTube. And, and I've done this before and I did it with a different video. I did it one with just me talking or as a test and it works fine. However, when I tried it with the podcast from Notebook LM, YouTube was blocking it and it wouldn't let it load. Let me let me actually share my screen out. Um, yeah, I could share that screen. There's nothing because it doesn't actually show. Because I, I left one here. To, I haven't showed Isaiah's yet, but I found it very interesting. This one, um, this is what happens when it it blocks them, and there's no documentation, no anything explaining what's going on. But I think Google, because Google, of course, owns YouTube, has said, "Hey, let's not let people upload these to YouTube." So um, it's fine. I just upload them elsewhere and share them. Uh, it was just a bummer that I couldn't put them in YouTube. Uh, also, by the way, while we're here, I was thinking about doing this. Let me let me filter on unlisted. Um, videos just so you guys get an idea I say I can remember um, club is amazing and and you get an idea of you know we have hundreds and hundreds let's see there's one of 30 of about and I don't think that's the right correct number but um 
yeah, there's a lot. Each one of these is an hour, right? And it's an hour long of us helping people work through auto hotkey stuff, right? We do them, oops, we do them three hours a week. And uh, it's just great learnings for people. And of course, we upload them unlisted. That's why I, I didn't mind sharing this because we see a little sort of the person, but um, they're private in that sense of only hero members get to see them. So sharing your screen isn't so risky because there's, you know, a limited number of people that are actually watching them. And we have, you know, in the here you see like 16 or 5 views, but most hero members, a lot of them actually attend the calls, right? So they don't go and rewatch the videos. But yeah, you get an idea, right? Really um, crazy amount of content that we don't actually, you don't even see because um, you're not, if you're not a hero member, um, you don't get to see that. So we're getting close. I remember this in another, in a, maybe another month or so. We'll have an hour a day of, so 352 hours of content um, of just a private hero calls. Anyway, it's a great program. Check it out. So let's see here. The video merger. This was another one. So Mike, those that 16 gig video I mentioned, what was interesting was there was one 16 gig video and then another one that was like 300 megs and another one was like 16 megs. And I'm like, I thought they were completely independent. And then I started looking at it, I realized each one was a continuation of the other one. And he said, yeah, my my web, his camcorder would just arbitrarily stop and break the videos. So um, we have this, it's a V1 version, but we need to create a V2 version of it. But we concatenated his original video. So now it's not just a 16 gig, it's 16 plus those other numbers I mentioned. And uh, makes it one. And then that way, when we did the transcribe um, in the summary tool, it made it one video because otherwise you have three separate videos. So we had to merge them into one um, and then get the transcriptions. And then we have an AI tool that goes through and allows us to um, summarize what was from the transcriptions, what was said. So um, yeah, anyway, that's that one video merger, YouTube download. This was one I was playing with because someone asked like, Hey, does our, was it the effortless video reducer that can we, does that grab videos from YouTube? And I'm like, no, that it's, that's really complicated. And YouTube is constantly changing, you know, how they have their videos available. Now there is a, to, a tool called YouTube download. Um, and that one, it's a Python program, if I remember correctly. And I've used it before and I had a wrapper for auto hotkey, but um, this one didn't work, but it, it does, you know, automate the downloading of them. Um, it, and it, it's just, it's really complicated. So um, I'm not sure if we'll make our own tool for that. This keyboard detector, um, I was playing during that um, client call with the radiologist. I mentioned to him that he, a lot of radiologists have these um, X24 keyboards and they're not cheap, but I, I found this one used for like a hundred bucks, which is still insane to me. Um, but programming them with the software they give you not not great not a great experience so is x and i were studying the xml file structure when you do program it we were looking at it going okay we can build our own gui to pro because once you create the xml file that's what it uses right so we're going to back into that and make an easier tool so you don't have to use their software to program it because it just was not fun automator spy i just mentioned to the guys there's a little minor hiccup with that um, but we're, we're also going to make it where you can customize your hotkey. Um, and because we did add, let's see if I go here and I right click. So this, if I come in here and I copy now, see they're flattened. Um, and, and I don't know if you saw, they had quotes on the outside. Let me bring over notepad. Oh, I don't see notepad. Let's bring over site. Oh, good. And I have this file open. So. Um, so it's wrapping these in quotes. That's how you need it. We put double spaces in between the things. Uh, however, note like on this window, see these uh, the circle AHK and the heart, um, and that's part of the file name. Well, if I right click here, we built this to purposely show you, hey, there's a problem, right? Like these are not regular characters, especially if you had a weird space or a dash, it's hard to notice. Our tool flags it, but I realize is they're not rendering properly. So I, I usually I think when it's the the question mark with the diamond, that's possibly a font issue instead of an encoding issue. I always get the two confused. It's one of the two, but um, we'll we'll get that fixed to where it actually renders them properly. But it's just a highlight to say, hey, buddy, make sure you come in here and actually here I should still be able to copy this, and it, I think it has the content. Nope. Didn't have the content. So yeah, we need to fix that. 
Um, but still, it's it's a really cool. We we like our version much better. But we're gonna right now. It's it's bound. Oh, also, let's see here. If I bring back up Chrome. I don't know if Isaiah did this or not. Or sorry, Irfan did this or not. But um, if you're over <clears throat> Chrome, yeah, he was with that one. They didn't get updated yet. Also, it says virtual window. It's not a virtual window. But I do want if it's Chrome or Edge or Firefox to say browser window because browser automating browser browser suck. And it's something just to note of like, hey, you got your work cut out for you, you know, if you're automating a browser. Um, there, and there are, we've covered nine different ways to automate browsers with AutoHotKey. Um, one of the best ways is not to automate the browser, but to imitate the browser and just do API calls directly. But yeah, um, this tool, our Automator Spy, it's just much more, if you're, you know, really into AutoHotKey, you'd love our tool. Um, so you might want to check that out. Anyway. Let's see if I think we were done with our list. Rich edit. So that rich edit, that that's with the automator spy. So that's what we're using in. No, I think actually we, we went with the scintilla control, I think. Uh, not the rich edit. So I'm not sure why that's in the automator spy, but it's, it is there. And then the toggle do not disturb. This one, I just added it to prompt assistant so I can hit alt D. I think it's, um. It's changing it. Ironically, uh, I need to relaunch the script. Let me relaunch it. Maybe that should take care of it. Let me see here. Because it's working. I see it. There we go. So it was um, after I changed the DPI, uh, because the script had already been launched, it wasn't displaying the notifications in the right spot because it was thinking that was the other part of the screen. So um, maybe we have it when you hit the hotkey to check the DPI and see if the DPI has changed and then it would adjust for it. Uh, that's a bit, you know, I don't think most people are changing their DPI very often, but it's a great way to toggle your do not disturb. Um, and I, I honestly, I love it because I want to be able to, to quickly turn on do not disturb. And it, it's a pain to do uh, in Windows with you to have to navigate to it and go find it. And it's like five or six clicks to get to it. And, uh, you know, when you do this kind of stuff for a living, that's really annoying. So. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, please like the video, it really helps us out. If you ever want help or, you know, like one of our, our um, readers, you know, wrote us and said, hey, Joe, I'm I'm looking for a tool for, you know, he wants to open CSV or Excel files. And then he wanted to search across the fields um, to do one search across all the fields to find things. And he was wondering if we knew of any tools that did that automatically. I'm like, that, that's not a common thing, but, um, you know, you could use ADO or SQLite to read the the SQL, the sorry, the CSV file, and then use um, SQL query. Now, of course, your users, you just build a GUI to, to wrap it so they don't see that, but um, it can be done. But the point is, you know, reach out to us if you have, if you're working on something or, or want our help, right? Um, I don't mind answering short questions, pointing in the right direction, but um, if you actually want code done stuff, then we, we have our done for you services, right? And I'll tell you, our guys can save you an amazing amount of time and build much more robust tools uh, just because that's what we do for a living. So thanks for watching. Have a good day. Cheers.